Next up, we have another segment from Colonel Majora. It looks like he's stealing ideas again, but I'm just kidding. He's actually not. He's expanding on some ideas. In fact, he's expanding on his own ideas and some other people's ideas. Yeah. Which is not plagiarism if you tell them. Which he Which does. Which he does. So you're not plagiarizing, Colonel. Good job. We're Let's get to it. We're proud of you. Begin! Warning. The following segment contains some spoilers for Portal 2 and Final Fantasy 13. Well, hello again, podcast eavesdroppers. Welcome back to Legendary Reflections. This time around, I've got another segment based on one from a past episode, one done by somebody else. The last one I did like this was quite a while back. Uh, I responded to something by random person. This time, I'm expanding on something started by Agoraphobia, but way back in episode 15. I'm going to go through some aspects of a bunch of non-Zelda games that I think could benefit, you know, actual Zelda games. And, you know, just remember that this topic was not my original idea. It was Agoraphobia's. And, yeah, I'm just taking up the subject because he seems to be done with it himself. So, onwards to ideas and stuff. Let's start with one that plenty of people have thought of before. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Now, if I'm honest, I have not played Skyrim. But, from what I can tell, there are multiple camera angle options. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can willingly switch from first to third person uh, and back at any time you want. I think this could definitely help with certain items in Zelda, you know, like like even first person sword fighting could be pretty cool, but it would certainly help with things like the bow and arrow. Also, Skyrim's dragons can be fought in wide open outdoor areas. I want some of that action. I want some giant monster to attack you and I want to fight it out in Hyrule Field. I want the space to run around enough to fight some gigantic boss in some torrential rainstorm while the landscape gets ripped to pieces. I want crazy monster action on the go, and that'll involve having outdoor wide-scoped boss battles. But really, I'm just painting a picture for myself. Actually, on the topic of bosses, Shadow of the Colossus had incredible fights with, like, epic bosses that, if I have my facts right, are fought with only a sword, a bow, and a horse. And the bosses are massive and climbable as if they were buildings. If Zelda had some of these kinds of enemies, they would easily make for some new favorite fights for a lot of fans. Uh, Not knowing exactly how to kill a giant monster also makes a fight more dynamic Uh, often makes it longer and more challenging. And, again, who doesn't like gigantic awesome bosses? But, moving on. How's about Portal 2? Now, of course, I'm not wishing for any crazy technology things or anything like that. What I want is more interaction with main villains, like in Portal 2 with its villains GLaDOS and Wheatley. Skyward Sword did this kind of thing pretty well, I mean, Girahim showed up a lot, but, again, he wasn't really the main villain. Um, I, I want a bunch of meetings and dealings with the big bad every now and then, but things should get more interesting as you move through the game. I mean, Portal 2 had you constantly hearing from the main villain, whether it be over an intercom or traveling and talking with them. Uh, Something else that I think could be taken from Portal 2 is a plot twist with a friendly character that turns out to be evil. Wheatley turned evil at one point and caused major interaction with the presumed villain, and that arguably was the most surprising moment in a game that I can remember off the top of my head. A lot of modern games have really... A lot of modern games have really shocking moments like this, but there's a sort of lack of true shock factor in a lot of Zelda games. So I want a partner, or at least a close friend or supporting character, to turn evil on you at some point. That would be a really good plot pusher. 
Lastly from this game, how about some explanations for really odd things? There always seems to be easy excuses of game logic uh, in, in these kinds of situations, but certain irksome game mechanics just really need to be explained. Portal 2 does this pretty well with its technology. I mean, it lets you fall from really, really high places without dying because of the long fall boots. And you can't bring objects from chamber to chamber because of the quote-unquote emancipation grills. Some little two-second bit of explanation like this would be really good to explain things with in Zelda. Like, why can't Link jump over something without an, a special item? Or why Ganon's, you know, a pig? Or just little things that we ask about and theorize about. And speaking of which, this would also keep people from having to theorize about a lot of things. Next, an aspect from a bunch of games. Um, I can't really list them all, but games like Final Fantasy XIII, Mass Effect Three, the Bioshock series, or the Castlevania games. But it, it goes on. We need multiple endings. Depending on how well you do in these games, or what paths you decide to take, there could be any number of results in the end. I think that there should at least be a special ending for a 100% completion of a Zelda game. I mean, it would certainly drive people to get every last task done, uh, more so than they already do, considering how many times people <laughs> replay Zeldas to get 100%. But it'd be, you know, it'd be nice to have that extra little thing when you get every last object and item. Plus, Final Fantasy XIII in particular had a really catastrophic ending. Uh, one of the multiple endings in Zelda could be like that. I mean, you could take Majora's Mask's moon falling and put that as one of the endings if you don't get much stuff done, like optional content. It would make something like that happening more purposeful, and this would make people wish to at least get a good enough percentage of completion to avoid something that bad happening. And of course there is Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft has an experience and level system, and for more than just killing things, uh, things that are done regularly in the game get you extra little bits of experience. And it's not just for getting levels for the sake of raising personal stats. Uh, you can enchant your weapons with these levels and give them better efficiency and special effects like that. I definitely want a chance to give enchantments to things like my sword and shield, ones that aren't required. Really, this is the same idea as Skyward Sword's upgrade system, but done better, and something that's not done to your inventory items. This should probably be restricted to things like armor, swords, and shields. And also, uh, they don't last forever. Minecraft's restriction is that once the armor or tool loses all its durability, then you have to make another one and enchant the new one. If used in a Zelda game, the enchantment could probably wear off after a certain amount of sword swings or hits taken. Lastly, appropriately, is The Last Story. This is an awesome game, so really it has lots of things that could be used. Things like sneaking around behind walls and killing enemies after luring them. Uh, lots of interchangeable weapons and equipment and voice acting that doesn't suck. Things like that. But mainly, there are partners in battle. And not just for special attacks because of them, like with most of Zelda's partners. In the last story, different combinations of your partners help you in different fights. One minute you could be fighting with just one friend, and the next you could be fighting with, like, six of them. Sometimes you can even get random people you pass by, like a knight or a mage or a person regarding a certain quest. There are plenty of supporting characters in Zelda, so I'd like to have some help in battling hordes of enemies. I mean, think about it. Those four people from Telma's Bar and Twilight Princess could probably give you a good chance at having a really epic horde battle. The point is, they can do a lot of work that you couldn't and help you when you know you need it. There's plenty more of stuff I can mention, but I'm gonna cut myself off. Uh, thanks again to Agoraphobia for the great segment concept. I really enjoyed his, and I hope he enjoyed mine. Tell me what you thought of it, and, and what kind of game do you think Zelda developers could learn from? 
uh, tell me in the comments, the forum thread, or at kernelmajora at gmail.com. Otherwise, that's about it. I got some good stuff coming up soon in future months. So until then, good day, good night, and good game. Yeah, so I guess he didn't steal all of his ideas. Thanks for plugging the forum thread there, Colonel. <laughs> Remember, guys, you can tell us what you thought of the podcast in the forum thread in the community section of the forum. Hint, hint. Otherwise, Din will beat me, so you better go. What if they don't like you? <laughs> you should have seen that facial expression, guys. That was one of the first times I wished we were a video podcast. <laughs> anyway. Let's go on to the next segment. Thanks, Colonel.